Well, we get a lot of statistics on uh, home prices and home activity. Uh, one that the Fed follows very closely, I understand, is the so-called K. Schiller Index. It looks at, I think, 20 metropolitan areas. And month over month, prices increasing uh, by about a percent, 6.8 percent year over year. Uh, the average home now at record highs as a result. And while it might be good if you own the home, uh, it's not great if you're trying to buy a home. And therein lies the rub. Anthony Shea is the Lone Depot uh, founder and chairman of the board. Anthony, what do you make of this? It's a catch-22 for those at least shopping and looking for homes because you have a lot of owners who are sitting on, you know, a very valuable piece of property. Um, but a lot of them are sitting on very low mortgage rates as well for the home they're in and they like it the way it is, right? Yeah. First of all, great to see you, Neil. I think there are Same here. lots of dynamics here. I think number one is keep in mind that two thirds of the outstanding mortgages out there have interest rates below 4%. Homeowners just simply can't afford to move. So that really mm. drives the lack of inventory. And of course, supply and demand curve, although interest rates are up, supply is low, and there's still a lot of cash on the sidelines. So therefore, keeping prices artificially high simply because there's lack of inventory. So what happens? It is like a Mexican standoff in a way. And I'm just wondering um, if rates, even in the six and three quarter percent neck of the woods, which is pretty low, um, and you're well below the 7% that was supposed to be the seminal figure which people would jump, and they're not jumping. What, what, what gets them jumping? Well, h h historically, Neil, 7%, anything in the single digits, if you look back in previous decade, that's a very attractive interest rate. However, Absolutely. over the last 15 years, we've been spoiled with interest rates that are much lower. And if you look at the last cycle, and certainly that was fueled by COVID, we had all time low interest rates below 3%. So in order for a homeowner to sell, they would have to pay off their three to 4% interest rate and to get funding for a brand new mortgage, which is now in the upper six or 7% interest rate. So it really uh, crushes the affordability. So you know, for people to move, they're typically moving up. So you're going to have a larger mortgage with a higher interest rate. And one other thing is, you know, the home equity market in this cycle, Neil, has changed significantly. There are over $30 trillion of available equity for U.S. homeowners to tap. In your previous guest, yeah. we talked about uh, credit card debt at all-time high and as well as personal loans. Some of that is just the movement from consumers accessing credit through non-mortgage products, which typically in the past, we would go after home equity loans or equity lines of credit. But because of the regulatory changes since Dodd-Frank, consumers have shifted over to pulling out equity and utilizing credit outside of the mortgage that they typically have done in the past. Yeah, something is fueling all of this buying, and you're quite right. I am curious what you make of where we go from here. I mean, the hot markets remain the hot markets around the Florida area, South Florida area, um, you know, Texas still seems to look pretty strong. Uh, we, we are seeing some signs in the Northeast, things are hiccuping a, a, a tad. Uh, how does the country look to you right now? Well, keep in mind that, you know, population growth and household formation doesn't stop. So the demand for housing is going to continue to increase and put a lot of pressure. And as housing prices continue to be elevated and interest rates continue to be elevated, that's just going to push, push affordability even higher. So we're starting to see some ease in some of the markets. And certainly we're, we're also watching the rental market. So you're seeing some of the rental market starting to pull back as well. So the economy is starting to change. And all of this um, uh, change in the trend as we're, you know, expecting lower interest rates, certainly that will help alleviate some of that pressure. Yeah. Real quickly, I had a guest on who said the, the, the election is also a factor, too. People just don't know what's coming down the pike and they're holding off. It seems like a stretch to me, but you're the expert. What do you think of that? Well, of course, any time in an election year, people, you know, sort of pause a bit, particular, you know, this year where, yeah. you know, there's so much uh, contrast and, and the candidates that, uh, that, that is available. Uh, but, you know, make no mistake about it. You know, housing is not a fad. Housing is not a cycle. Housing is not a trend. 
uh, household formation will continue and there will be continuous demand on housing. Now, whether or not we're going to go into any sort of uh, an adjustment period in, in the future, uh, slightly, I don't think so. I think the demand is just way too much. It's a supply and demand issue. And uh, affordable housing, as well as step-up housing right now, uh, they're, we're in short supply. And uh, I don't think yeah. that will change anytime soon, regardless of the outcome of the elections. All right. Well, on that happy note, Anthony, I mean, you call him as you see him. I always appreciate that. Uh, Anthony, I tell you, the uh, Lone Depot founder and chairman of the board, sort of giving a good lay of the land where things are going real estate-wise.